Hi guys, um, my name is Dustin Mills. Um, I directed the movies that you uh, just watched and the movies that are coming up that hopefully you're going to stick around and watch. Um, everybody can hear me and see me all right and everything. We're good? Awesome, awesome. Okay, so yeah, do um, you guys have any questions for me? Did I mean, uh, give me feedback on the movies you watched so far, anything. You know, let's just, um, let's chat it up. Um, I actually didn't make the puppets. Oh, I made the monster puppet. Um, my mom actually made the rest of the puppets. So that'd be a good question for her. She might be in the chat still, um, Kim Mills. But she made them. I don't remember how long. Um, that seems like the shortest part of the production because everything else, all the post-production, took so long. So... Oh, yeah, I will do that. Sorry about that, uh, Robert. Uh, Mr. Skeeter Buster says, How did you come up with doing horror and puppets? Um, I think it's just um, something that I wanted to see and um, hadn't really been uh, done yet except for in, like, Meet the Feebles, which is not so much a horror film. Um, it's more like, a, like an exploitation film, I think. So I, I just I think I perceived the void and then tried tried to fill it essentially i wanted to watch a uh, puppet horror movie so i made one so much of the the movies i make are, are the ideas for them are born from you know i'll flip through my netflix queue or back in the day when you'd go and browse the rental store i'd walk through forever and i couldn't find anything and so i'd realize that you know the, the movie i was looking for didn't exist and so hopefully I'm making those movies that don't exist. At least that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, do you f feel that you are more of a horror director or comedy or just an equal mix? I don't, I don't really know. I, I, I mean, I like horror and I like doing, in silly, doing silly stuff. We just did, um, we're in post-production on The Ballad of Skinless Pete and um, Kill That Bitch. And those are both fairly dark. Um, Skinless Pete has some dark humor. Kill the Bitch is deadly serious. And I will say that making a serious, gritty film is easier than making comedy. Um, it just, I don't know if it's, it's because it's easier for the actors or what, but it's, it's much easier. The timing isn't as, po as important and um, scenes seem to breeze by. Maybe drama is just easier to understand. I don't know. But I don't feel like I've explored enough genres to really know what kind of director I am. Um, there's so much I want to do. I know it seems like I've made a lot of movies, but I've only been doing this for a couple of years. So, um, I don't know. I don't want to label myself because there's, there's so much that I want to explore as a filmmaker. Uh, what's my favorite medium? Do I prefer working with actors or playing around with puppets and special effects? Um... I like getting to the end result with the puppets is really satisfying, but doing it is such a bitch. Like it's a total, total pain in the ass, a logistics nightmare. And um, especially since I, I mean, I had no puppeteers on Pup Monster Massacre. I puppeteered all the puppets in the movie. And maybe if I had had puppeteers, which would be like working with actors, it wouldn't have been so hellish. But it was production was. I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved making the movie, but. It was rough. Uh, working with actors is much, much easier. So I guess I prefer working with actors, although now I'm kind of trying to move into some more animated stuff, so we'll see how that goes. Um, Indy Horrors asked me, uh, tell us a little more about Kill That Bitch and Skinless Pete, uh, maybe some backstory, release date info, and stuff like that. Okay, um, well, The Battle of Skinless Pete is sort of a... Um, 
it's like a, a science gone wrong monster movie kind of. It's it with a really dark streak in the humor department. It's very very dark. It's very very. It deals with some very heavy themes, uh, probably heavier than anything else about friendship and uh, the nature of being a good person and a good friend, um, and the dark places that that can go when obsession uh, replaces love and. And all that stuff, and that's the pretentious side of it. And at its core, it's really just a really slimy monster movie. There's uh, lots of practical effects and gore and slime and goo. It's like a cross between Reanimator and The Fly. It comes out October fifteenth. Our Indiegogo pre-order phase just uh, ended for it. We unfortunately did not raise the money, but uh, the movie's being made anyway. So um, pr- hopefully, they will ship on October fifteenth. Kill That Bitch comes out in November, and Kill That Bitch is it's hard to describe without giving too much away. All I'll say is it's the closest to a slasher movie I've ever made, but it's not really a slasher film. And there's a point in the movie where you realize that what you've been watching is not what you think you've been watching, and hopefully not in an obnoxious way. Um, Horror Scream says, You mentioned that you might go into animation. Is this there where you would prefer to be heading as a director? Um... I don't know yet, but I kind of think so. I've done some animation for some music videos. Um, I just helped Steve Radzinski with his movie, Super Task Force 1, which is like a throwback to the Power Rangers and um, old tokusatsu television shows. And uh, there are there's a giant robot battle that um, I created all the CGI for. And it's pretty rudimentary. It's pretty simple. Um, Partly for time's sake, partly to you know, so it fits the aesthetic of the movie because it felt you know it looked like Pacific Rim. It wouldn't feel like Power Rangers anymore. And uh, doing those robots and 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 all the animation and and learning new principles and all that stuff, I just really really enjoyed it. So I, I you know I'm thinking about doing some short stuff, um, more short animated stuff. I've done a couple music videos and and sequences in my movies that were animation. But um, I'm, I don't want to say too much. I always say too much, and then what I think is going to happen isn't going to happen. But suffice it to say, I'm working on some animated stuff, and, and hopefully um, something really big and really good f- will come from it. But that's all I'm going to say for now. But uh, there is something in the works, but we'll just see what happens. Uh, what are my influences in getting into film? Um, I You know, I think it's... It's more that I, I wanted to do special effects since I was a kid, and that grew into wanting to do wanting to direct and write. Really, I just want to tell stories. Um, so if you know something happened where I couldn't make movies, I would find another way to tell stories. I'd make comic books. I'd write books. Um, I, I'd do something just so I could keep telling stories. But it was a love of special effects that got me into it, and that came from the original King Kong. And the work that Willis O'Brien did on that film, I remember being a kid in my in my grandma's living room, and watching King Kong on um, probably like AMC or Turner Classic Movies or you know one of those channels. And then after King Kong was over, they had um, the making of King Kong, and that was like the first moment I realized that movies were made. Because when you're a kid, you don't really think about that. You just watch a movie, and you're like, oh, I watched a movie. That was a movie. For all I knew, it sprouted out of the ground. But to see the people working on it, see Willis O'Brien painstakingly, you know, animating this this uh, King Kong puppet, you know, and they always show the actual puppet that's like this big and is all rotted now, and like, or it's just a metal skeleton, and uh, I don't know, that utterly fascinated me. And then throughout the '90s, ni- the '90s were like the era of making of because there that was like the birth of a blockbuster so jurassic park terminator 2 um you know all these things would come out and then they uh jumanji was another one and then they'd show the making of and you could watch on television entertainment tonight I, I remember there being a making of jumanji on oprah of all places and those really really got me interested in in doing effects and getting into movies so that's where it came from i think um, Indie Horror says, you've been pumping out films at an amazing clip so far. You recently announced some changes with how you're going to be doing things at DMP. Could you share that information with us? Is this just a quantity versus quality thing, or is there more to it? No, there's more to it. Um, there's, <laughs> It's complicated. Um, suffice to say, I'm going to keep making movies. 
just my idea of the sort of movies that I should be making and where I should be spending my time is kind of changing because I've sort of, over the past two years, I've sort of run myself ragged and um, uh, I'm changing my distribution model. I'm changing the way I think about things. It's really just growth. Um, I think when people, when I told people that they were afraid I was going to stop making horror movies or I was going to stop making movies altogether and that's not true. Um, but things are going to change and it's mostly internal, but I think that you'll be able to see it in the end product as well. But, um, I mean, that's mostly it. It's just growing as a filmmaker and making the changes necessary as I, you know, find my way along this weird path. I, <laughs> I also mentioned the uh, making of the HBO intro in the early eighties, which is, was totally badass, And I remember seeing that. And um, was amazed at the way they made the, like, um, oh, I don't know what you want to call it, like the light tracer go around the HBO with, like, the, the twirling mats and stuff like that. That was totally fascinating. Is there anybody you would like, you would want to work with either in the horror community or just in general? Um, there are people that I have, I've met that I'd like to work with someday, like... Um, um, there's this guy named Jeff Cochran uh, who goes on like Wicker, Wicked Beard Productions who makes amazing props and costumes and stuff and I would love to do something and hire him to create, you know, like if I was doing some sort of like epic uh, action movie or fantasy film to have him do the armor or, or something like that because he does amazing stuff and um, there, there are puppet makers out there that I'd really like to work with, um, Gemini Productions I'd really like to work with, not really anybody big, like, I, I don't know why, I don't, maybe it's because I'm intimidated, I don't know, but I just don't really have any desire to work with lots of big people, um, like, I don't want to make a movie with Bruce Willis or anything like that, I do want to work with Doug Jones, I met Doug Jones once, he's the nicest human being I've ever met in my entire life, and I would like to put him in movies someday, but we'll see. Um, and you horror says, tell us about how the Max Cerci Omega file connection came about. Um, trying to remember when Max started talking to me. I think it's because I mentioned doing special effects and then he checked out some music videos and stuff I had done and he needs some effects done for his, um, for his movies and nothing has officially happened yet, but I think, um, I'm all ostensibly on board to do effects for his, um, for I know his his big sci-fi movie that he's working on, and uh, maybe House of Evil, but I'm not sure. Um, so I've been buried in uh, Steve Radzinski's um, Super Tax Force One, so like that's where my brain has it right now. I need to get like out of that headspace, but I, I should be working with um, Max very soon, um, which will be cool because his um, uh, movie Plankton, aka uh, I think it's also called Creatures from the Abyss. Is a movie that I really, really dig. Dead air, dead air. Horror Scream says that he also met Doug Jones, and yeah, he is really, like, I don't, <laughs> I, you know, I'd always thought that he was a very positive human, because I'm a huge fan of his, because I'm uh, ludicrously in love with the Hellboy movies, and anything that Guillermo del Toro does, honestly, um, and I was a little bummed that Doug doesn't seem to be in Pacific Rim, but anyway, I'm a big fan of Doug Jones, and uh, I took a lot of courage and some coaxing from my girlfriend to finally walk up to him and talk to him. And, um, yeah, amazing guy. Amazingly nice and supportive and positive and uh, best experience I've ever had meeting someone famous. Uh, Mindy Horse says, The one film we haven't aired is Basalt Zombies. Can you tell us more about it and where people can pick up a copy? Um... Yes, you can get a copy and on Amazon.com and I think BathSaltZombies.com. I don't handle the sales of that one, so um, you, 
you'll just have to look for it. I don't, I don't have any on my site at, at the moment. But um, you should be able to check it out on Amazon and stuff like that. I think if you do a Google search, you'll find it. Uh, Max is telling me that my microphone is too low. Um, give me a second. Let me raise that up. If I can figure out how to do that. Let's mute my microphone. Tools. Options. Sorry, I know this is super exciting. What I'm doing right now. Okay. Hopefully that's better. Is that any better? Um, Horror Scream says, will there be more items added to your website store? Um, I actually am starting to move stuff up over to my store envy, um, which I don't remember the name of right now. Can I find that for you guys real quick? Oh, it's actually really simple. It's dmp.storeenvy.com. I'll put the link in the chat here. Um, there we go. That is where stuff is moving and where you can get lots of stuff right now uh, from me. Um, that's probably the where everything will be eventually. Um, it's just easier to manage. Um, so check that out. Uh, I would highly suggest you pick up the Blu-ray of the Pub Monster Massacre because it's a very limited edition. I think there are about 16 or 17 copies left, and when they're gone, they're gone. Um, and uh, we have a new edition, Night of the Tentacles, coming out uh, this coming week, and uh, there'll be Blu-rays of that and same deal. When they're gone, they're gone. Very small, limited runs because, you know, basically a one-man operation here just printing DVDs and putting them together and sending them out. And so if I do too many, it gets in the way of me actually making movies, which is no good. Um, so DVDs are much easier. I can uh, sort of automate that. But the Blu-ray's got to do by hand, so they're all going to be limited uh, for the time being. So um, grab that and uh, pick up some of the other movies. I think the director's cut of Zombie A-Hole is up there, which is the... Uh, I think it's my preferred cut of the movie. It's a little shorter. moves along a little quicker. Horror Screams ask if I'll sign items. I will sign items, but here's the thing. Um, some of the items don't come from me. They're drop shipped from a manufacturer. But um, if you find me on Facebook or email me, I'm easy to get a hold of. And um, I can hook you up with my address. And you can send me the covers, and I will sign them and send them back to you. I know that's not ideal, but I can't keep, you know, a bunch of stock of all the movies uh, sitting around. Uh, Max is asking, will you ever sell the small coffin with the thingy from Zombie A-Hole? Maybe doing some replicas and selling them. I actually did sell that to a fan. Um, Jeremy Dobson, who's remarkably supportive of my stuff and really likes my movies, has that displayed in his home. Um... Yeah, I, you know what? I've actually thought about doing those. Not the same one, but just different creatures in boxes and taking, the, to the, taking them to the conventions. I haven't got around to it only because um, I just I seem to never have time, you know? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I have thought about that. Maybe I should get on that. Um, I'm also doing less conventions. I'll be at Cinema Wasteland this um, in October. And then um, I'll be at Days of the Dead. I think that's in November. Um, they're screening Easter Casket there. So, or no, Puppet Monster Massacre, maybe? Oh, that's bad. I can't remember. If Jason's watching, listening, he's probably ready to kill me. They're screening one of the movies there, and I'm going to be doing a live commentary. So um, I'll be at some Wasteland, Days of the Dead, and then I have no other plans for conventions at the moment. Hopefully some, but um, I usually aim for the smaller ones. No, it's not the same weekend. It's the weekend before, isn't it? Did I mark my calendar wrong? Oh. Why was I thinking the 19th? All right, Robert. I'll... 
I'll sort that out. I'm sorry. Why was I thinking the 19th? Um, what was the budget on Pup Monster Massacre? Would you do a sequel? The budget was um, $3,500. Most of that was computer and camera. Um, I do want to do a sequel, but I need the budget, which I don't have. And um, I tried to run um, a um, crowdfunding campaign for it, and it uh, didn't happen. So... <laughs> Um, I may try again. I don't know yet. Um, my thought right now is that I'll run a Kickstarter. Because here's the thing about Pup Monster Massacre is that people seem to really like it, but it made absolutely no money. And it still makes no money. And nobody buys it. So <laughs> um, it's hard to justify making a sequel that would probably be just as expensive, if not more. So... Um, I'll, I may run a Kickstarter campaign, an all-or-nothing Kickstarter campaign, and if we raise the money, which wouldn't be a lot, I mean, five or six thousand dollars would be enough. I think I'm don't hold me that I think to pay everybody and to make the movie. But if we can't raise that money, then I may just cancel the project altogether. Because while it's something I want to do, and I know that a portion of the fans want, I don't know that it's feasible to get it funded. So we'll we'll see what happens. Business gets in the way sometimes, unfortunately. Uh, what's the favorite? My favorite thing I've ever done. Um, I really like. I think my two best movies are Night of the Tentacles and Easter Casket. But honestly, I, I really like all of my movies because um, they're like time capsules. They're, they're, they hold the memories of what we went through to get them made. So, um, I don't know. They all have a special place in my heart. But I think those two are my two best films I, for completely different reasons. Night of the Tentacles is, I, you know, I tried to shoot it really, really well. And, um, uh... It just it's a very personal story and Easter cask is just no hold bar no holds barred craziness and lots of special effects and I like what we were able to accomplish with very little money on that one um, is the mouth and eye of the thingy animated with CGI or practical effects are you talking about the little guy in the box the little guy in the box a lot of people don't realize this they think he's a puppet or that he's animatronic um, He's not. His face is CGI. He's real. He's actually there, but I used a program in CGI to, to puppeteer his um, his eyes and mouth and stuff. So he was still puppeteered, but he's puppeteered with a mouse. Um, you know, I would listen to the audio and watch the screen and move the mouse to make his, his face move. Um, I haven't done it since, though. I probably... No, that's not true. The Megapope in Easter Casket was done the same way. Uh, Horace Grimm says there have been many independent films using these crowdfunding sites. Some work, some don't. It really, you know what, it has so much to do with how you promote it and how you campaign it. And the unfortunate thing is, is a lot of times you need money to advertise your campaign to raise money. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's kind of hard um, to get people to notice. Um, so what I have been doing with, we did a crowdfunding for Easter Casket and for um, uh, Skinless Pete, sorry, brain fart. And um, what I did was, like, I made sure I had the funds to make the movie, and the movie was going to get made. And then we throw up the Indiegogo as pre-orders, and basically any money that we get from our pre-orders goes directly back into the movie. So we're not really profiting from the Indiegogo. We're just taking the money and throwing it back into production. So maybe it means paying someone or feeding the actors while they're here or something like that or, you know, gas money, whatever we can do um, with the money that, that comes in. Uh, where and when did you meet Brandon Sawkill? Uh, I met Brandon actually 
um, when I moved to Toledo, he was part of a um, another small indie filmmaking company um, that's in Swanton, which is near Toledo. And I went there, and I was actually starting to make um, Puppet Monster Massacre there with them under their banner. And then some shit went down, and we didn't really see eye to eye with them, and Brandon and I left. And we've kind of been doing Dustin Mills production stuff ever since then. And he's a great guy. He's de- the most dependable human being I've ever met. Um, he's a fantastic actor and, um, and really one of my best friends. So I'm just lucky that I, I have someone like him to help me out. Horace Creams offering to post links on his site, HoraceGreams.org, if I ever want to do such a thing. That'd be fantastic. Um, Although I, I guess <laughs> I sort of stopped sending out press releases because they were just being ignored. So now I have a hard time remembering to send stuff to people. But uh, I'll try. I'll try to remember to send you links. But yeah, um, Brandon's my partner in crime. I. I it's hard to imagine making a movie without him. Um, any movies in horror that greatly motivated you to do horror? Um, I've sort of come to realize something about myself, and this this has to do with the way that DMP is about to change. And, and that is that I am not a horror fan. I thought I was. But I'm not. I'm a movie fan. And I like horror. <laughs> Alright? Um, but more than horror, I like dark fantasy. So really, the, the things that got me into that were... I mean... They're horror films, but they're not like hardcore horror films. People ask me my favorite horror movie. And my favorite horror movie is Monster Squad, if that counts. I love that movie, but it's probably technically a horror fantasy or a dark fantasy. Um, Night of the Creeps, um, Return of the Living Dead, that's a little more horror. That kind of stuff made me want to make scary movies and stuff with monsters. I love monsters. Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, Forbidden World, Humanoids from the Deep. Um, You can't see it, but I have a Humanoids from the Deep poster up on my wall. Um, Actually, I'll show you. I'll show you what I have on my wall real quick. Maybe I can do this. So this is um, Evil Dead poster that I actually made uh, back when I was a graphic designer. And then over here is, uh, actually Brandon got this for me. This is a German, I can't see it very well, there's a glare. It's a German Humanoids from the Deep uh, poster. And uh, what's special about this one is the girl on it is actually topless. So that's, that's fun. And there's a, you know, Pup Monster Massacre posters and all that stuff. Signed pictures from celebrities that I like. Um. <clears throat> Max thing we need to team up and make a Dark Crystal movie together. That'd be awesome, Max. <laughs> make it happen and all, and we can do it. <laughs> I'm no good at finding money. But I'm good at making puppets and shit. So that part, we got covered. Or the sequel, Horror Scream says. Um, I can't remember if I said, but Max was saying we need to make a Dark Crystal movie together. And Indie Horror was saying that I should make something like Dark Crystal. And uh, that'd be awesome. Actually, I would really like that. Someone says, I want to make Gremlin movies now. I love little monster movies like um, Gremlins, Gremlins 2, Critters, Critters 2, Fuck Critters 3, Critters 4 I still like, uh, Ghoulies 2 and Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies 1 and 4 not so much, but Ghoulies 2 and 3. Um, someone said, even Nuki. No, not Nuki. <laughs> uh, or Mac and Me. I liked Mac and Me when I was a kid, but that movie is... It was hard to get through.
if you've never heard of Nuki, go Google Nuki right now. Or just go to YouTube and type in Nuki so you can see what we're talking about. It's this terrible E.T. ripoff with this, like, a creature that somehow looks even more like a turd than E.T. did. It's fucking magical. Where did that genre go? The little creature genre? Like, fuck Sharknado and stuff and all these, like, crappy CGI asylum movies. Like, they need to make little creature movies. Like, throw in some little creatures and some mischief and maybe a boob or two, and you got a good movie, as far as I'm concerned. Even Munchies. You guys remember Munchies? Munchies was good. Then there was those weird sequels and... Where, uh, was it Dom DeLuise was the voice of the munchie? I don't know. We're getting way off topic. We're wandering into, like, Roger Corman land, early 90s Roger Corman. The new horse says, somewhere out there, Critter's License has to be available for, available for purchase. I'm sure it is, and I'm sure I can't afford it. Um, Sparkle Death says, what we need more, like, stuff the full moon, like... Family offshoot. Oh, yeah, what was that called? Like, Wizard Entertainment or something? Is that what it was? They did cool stuff. I really liked um, uh, Josh Kirby, Time Warrior. Do you remember that? Those were cool movies. And Prehysteria. Prehysteria was fucking brilliant. Uh, somewhere on VHS, I have the first Prehysteria, I think. I love those movies. Max just mentioned Head of the Family. That movie's so weird. It's like one of those movies that's like not even that good, but you watch it and you just can't stop watching it. I think it's because there's full frontal nudity every five minutes or something. And yours says, we're not done lobbying for Dustin Mills' Puppet Master, by the way. <laughs> yeah. And Horace Grimms, I'm sure Charles, Charles Band would make a movie with you. I wouldn't be so sure about that. I don't, you know what? I don't know if anybody would ever let me have the puppet master series what i've always joked around about doing is um just making one just making one on my own and just giving it charles band and being like here you can have it i don't even want any money just stop making them on your own uh question as a filmmaker what is the hardest thing into a budget you can ever plan on um, you know what? Budgets are never a problem. Never seem to be a problem. Um, I don't mind working with minuscule budgets. Um, maybe locations. Let's say Max says lack of money. Yeah, lack thereof. Lack there. You know, lack of a budget. Um, what I find the hardest part about planning a movie is scheduling and not having people uh, flake out on you. And getting five people or ten people or however many people who have completely separate lives from one another, who are coming from different parts of the country sometimes, into a room together and have them know their lines and execute a scene. That's the hard part. That's the hardest part. And when we're done, I always think about what a miracle we've just created because it's just amazing that all these pieces fell together and somehow a movie came out the other end. It's kind of amazing. What about the Demonic Toys films? I have only seen Demonic Toys and Dollman vs. Demonic Toys, but I love Demonic Toys. I might like Demonic Toys better than Puppet Master, actually. Although I love Puppet Master 2. I watch Puppet Master 2 and Demonic Toys over and over and over again. And... Little known fact, the shithead who wrote Man of Steel and those three um, Batman movies that everybody seems to think are amazing, that I don't, uh, Dave Goyer actually wrote Demonic Toys, and I would argue that's the best thing he's ever written. Except for maybe the Nick Fury TV movie. That was pretty good. David Goyer is mostly Miss. Who am I to be saying that? Like, I'm some hotshot. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I just don't like Goyer. Like, I, 
I feel like he has really good ideas, but he he sacrifices character and plot to get to his action sequences, even if it doesn't make any sense. Uh, anyway, I don't want to go off on a tangent. What about Transers? I've only ever seen like the first three Transer movies, but I like them. I really like the first one. I actually liked um, uh, David Hasselhoff as... Nick Fury. That movie's not bad. If you go back and watch that, I mean, you have to take into account it was a TV movie made in like, what was it, 1995? You have to, you have to get cut some slack, but it's not fucking bad. And their helicarrier was badass looking. Is what still on IMDb? The Nick Fury movie or Transfers or? Someone said the Hoff can do no wrong. The Hoff can do some wrong. He can do some wrong. <laughs> what is the weirdest convention experience I have ever had? Um, man. I've never really had a weird experience at a convention. I... Maybe can weird be good? Because I had a really good experience at a, at a convention one time. Um, I was getting in an elevator. And I remember distinctly that I was wearing my Fright Rags, Tom Adkins, Thrill Me shirt. So I was getting into an elevator. And from behind me, I, I hear, hey, hey, hold, hold the door, hold the door. So I put my hand out and I held the door. And this old guy stepped into the, the elevator and he's carrying all this stuff like down to the convention floor and it was Tom fucking Atkins and I almost shit my pants because Tom Atkins is not only on my shirt now he's standing next to me in the elevator and he's old as balls but he's really strong because he was hauling all these all this shit down to the floor and um, I started talking to him I think I literally went hey man you're on my shirt and he's like oh yeah Benji Scrivens did that I went up with Fred, and we went and did this thing, the screening of Night of the Creeps, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And uh, night, that guy's nice as hell, and really seemed not cool with the way that horror is nowadays. Like, uh, he was kind of railing against Saw and Hostel, and liked it better when horror was fun, and I, I tend to agree with him. Uh, I'm waiting for Skinless Pete. How did you do the effect of the flesh removed from the face? Um... That will actually be, it starts out as uh, some appliances that are uh, torn off and built up. We use this um, super, like the super slime stuff to get that sticky, viscous, like trail of gooey crap. Um, but the final look of Pete is actually a, an over the head silicone mask. Um, uh, Max, he, he, actually, Max, you're using something similar in House of Evil, right? You're using a silicone mask. That's what we used. Um, uh, Adam Edwards created it for us, and I painted it. And then uh, instead of doing you know hours and hours of makeup on Brandon, he would just slip it over his head, and he would be you know it move with his face and everything. So it worked out really really well. And you says, we definitely need to do some behind-the-scenes video to show the insanely awesome effects Dustin puts together. Oh, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I think it's funny you think they're awesome, because not everyone thinks they're awesome. Um, although, you know what? No, awesome is the word to describe them, because this is my mantra when I'm making stuff, and what I tell other people is that it doesn't matter if it looks real. It matters if it looks awesome. So I don't necessarily go for realism. Um, I don't always do things the proper way. I just sort of keep throwing crap together until it looks the way I want it to look. Um, so, uh, sometimes it works better than others. I'm also good at hiding things with digital effects or with lighting and stuff if it doesn't look great. But, um, we should do that. That would be fun. Um, maybe I, I, we've talked about this forever, Robert. I need to record something and send it to you. Do I have any Easter eggs in my movies? I do. 
and I'm not going to point out any of them. Ha! You gotta watch them. Uh, a lot. Of, I get messages a lot of times where people notice things in, in the movies. Um, not every movie has them, uh, but they're they're in there. Little references, little things from the other movies. Um, I will tell you this. Um, several of my movies take place in the same universe. Not all, but several of them. And one day, if I had a gajillion dollars, I would make my own Avengers and mash all the characters together. Horse Scream says, everyone has their critics. Be true to yourself, Dustin. Do what you want to do. Uh, that's, I mean, that's the idea. That's what I want to do. And Indie Horror said, you do some pretty great practical effects creation though don't sell yourself short i'm not selling myself short i'm just being realistic <laughs> i'm glad that people dig them i really am but it's kind of like um there's a movie right now that i've watched probably 20 times since i bought it uh that movie's called manborg and that movie is a perfect example of it doesn't have to look real it just has to look awesome because the shit in that movie is so awesome and it's so like you can almost see how they put thing put stuff together, you know, out of model parts and latex and wire and shit, and it's just awesome. Like I love, love it. Um, there's a guy who's a really big influence on in me uh, named um, Rob Schraub, who worked on Monster House and Kung Fu Panda, but he also directed and did the effects for many episodes of the Sarah Silverman program. Um, he directed a short film called Robot Bastard. And you should go to robotbastard.com, I think is the website, and watch that um, as soon as you can because it's amazing. Um, he also did this series called Twigger's Holiday, which was absolutely amazing. And uh, some, if anybody's a comic book nerd out there, he did a comic book series called Scud the Disposable Assassin. And it's amazing. And he uh, sort of like pioneered this concept of uh, drawless animation and how to build things out of stuff you found, and um, it's just awesome. Look him up on YouTube or, or whatever. Just find his stuff. It's amazing. Um, there's a really great episode of Sarah Silverman Program, if you guys have Hulu, called Breve, B-R-E-V-E. It's I think it's the last episode of the third season. He directed it and like wrote it and did all the storyboarding, and it's fucking amazing. It's a perfect example of his work. So I'll stop gushing about Rob Schraub, but he's awesome. Um... <clears throat> As someone who does a lot of practical effects yourself, do you see yourself watching films now and being able to better detect exactly how things were made or what went into them? Um, I don't know. I feel like I kind of always have done that. Uh, so, you know what I actually notice more now, and it has less to do with the practical side of things, is animation and the concepts of animation, squash and stretch and the, the timing and anticipation and... Um, all the main principles I notice a lot more when I'm watching animated stuff or things that have CGI. Those are things I notice. Um, practical effects, um, you know, I, I I still absorb as much as I can. You know, I follow ADI on YouTube and Legacy Effects and Stan Winston Studios and all that stuff. Um, or Stan Winston Institute, I should say. Um, but, um... I don't know. I, 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 maybe I do it and don't think about it, you know, or I just assume I know how it's done. But um, I, I feel like I notice visual effects more, and I try to break those down in my head a little more than practical effects. Um, Max can tell us exactly what camera was used. Looking. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Max can tell us exactly what cameras use by looking at the film. Us regular Joes have no fucking idea. Um, I used a Canon HV20 on Puppet Monster Massacre, which is just a camcorder that shot on mini DV tape. Um, the reason I got it is because it shot 1080p at uh, 24 frames a second. Um, now I shoot on a Canon 60D, which is a DSLR. It has interchangeable lenses. So um, I can get pretty decent image quality out of that. I'd really like to have something that's a full frame sensor. Um, 60D is crop, so it's not full quality and it's not, you know, it's cropping in on my lenses a little bit. So it'd be cool to have like a 5D Mark II or something like that, so that I can um, 
get the full benefit of my lenses and reduce the amount of digital grain and all that. But um, I shoot my movies with a Canon 60D. I mostly like them with work lights and clamp lights from like Walmart and Target and Meyer and you know whatever's cheap. Um, so I think we get decent results. And I spend a lot of time on the look of my movies because something that drives me nuts is uh, filmmakers who don't understand lighting, um, who just don't use lighting and shit like that. And they try to say, oh, it's part of my aesthetic. It's gritty and raw, and it's no, it's fucking lazy. Uh, there's making a movie look good is so cheap that there's really no excuse to have a shitty looking movie go buy some lights learn three point lighting and um, make your movie look as good as you possibly can Max says there's new Canon T5i with the new Digimark sensor for less than one grand at 24 frames a second I would love to get that but I have less than a grand to my name right now so maybe someday Horror Screams, if someone came up to you with a blank check to make a movie, what would you do with it? Oh, man. That... <coughs> that is a tough question, because I have lots of big projects that I'd like to do. Um, there are two big projects I'd really, really, really like to do, and um, one is... Uh, Kaiju Crusher Kane, which um, I know when I finally make people are going to say that I stole the word Kaiju from Pacific Rim, but those people are stupid. Um, I wanted to make it for a while now. It's about a guy um, with some superpowers, but mostly he's just normal and seems kind of homeless, who defends a city that is constantly attacked by Godzilla-sized monsters. And I've always wanted to make that movie because the thought of having this little guy, this itty-bitty little guy fighting these huge monsters without you know, without tanks or helicopters or anything like that. He's just a dude fighting them. You know, he has to jump off of buildings and punch them and, and you know, and throw things at them and stuff like that. I've always wanted to make that movie. Um, another one is Plague of Monsters, which is sort of a... If you've ever seen this old cartoon called The Inhumanoids, and if you haven't, you should because it's awesome. Um, I, it's kind of my love letter to The Inhumanoids, with a HP Lovecraft bent to it. Um, it's a team of monster fighters battling HP Lovecraft monsters and um, with powered armor and special abilities and awesome vehicles. And it, it's, it's like a toy movie, like, like Pacific Rim. Wait, I keep mentioning that movie because I love it. Pacific Rim was like, it took you back to like having your... Um, your, your toys and bashing them together and stuff like that. So this would be that, like, when you're done watching Plague of Monsters, you will want to, um, you'll wish that you had toys of Plague of Monsters, essentially. And Humanoids was uh, one of those weird shows that they, like, tried out in a block of, like, 10 or 15 minutes around the same time that Gem came out and a couple other... Um, if you guys remember Jim and the Holograms, um, it didn't last very long. I think there's only like 13 episodes, um, but you can watch them on YouTube if you know if you don't own them or whatever. And uh, they're just awesome. It's just these awesome monsters, and it's really violent for the time. And um, God, I just I love Inhumanoids. But it was like humans and like this robot armor battling monsters. And I just want to take that simple premise, you know, and 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 work from that. It, you know, and they'd have maybe not like mechs, like they wouldn't be walking around in mech suits, but they have armor and special weapons, and they'd be fighting like Star Spawn and Cthulhu and Neuralathotep and um, Gugs and, you know, Night Gaunts and all this shit. Sounds like Giver, someone says. I love Giver. If you want, when you watch Easter Casket, um, there's actually a Henshin sequence with retractable armor that's inspired by Giver. Would you ever make a movie with Troma? They would love to make those movies you mentioned. Bring in Sergeant Kabugami NYP and the Tox Avenger. A whole new franchise is born. No, I don't... I liked Troma a lot when I was growing up, when I was in high school and stuff, and there's still some of their movies I really like, but I don't really have any desire to make a Troma movie. 
Um, I don't want to shit on anybody or make anybody feel bad, but that's just not my style. Um, I mean, in the way that there's lots of like nudity and craziness is my style, I guess, but I, I think if I was going to make a trauma style movie, I'd be better off releasing it on my own. Um, I've just, I've, there's been too many filmmakers I've known who have had bad experiences and, um, I don't necessarily, um, prescribe to their, their mantras about filmmaking and the world in general. So, uh, their politics, I guess. So, um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I don't really want to make a trauma movie. Mick says, better you make your own franchise, smarter. That's kind of how I feel about it. Especially now, like, you know, Easter Casket is, is entirely self-distributed, and Skinless Pete, I think, is going to be, and so is Kill That Bitch. And um, with movies that I'm making for sometimes less than a thousand bucks, it seems to be the, the smart idea to just do things on my own and see how they catch on. If I could kill any celebrity in my movie, which one would it be? Um, I don't know. I don't want to kill anybody. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I hate any celebrities enough to do that because I don't really know any celebrities. Someone said Bieber. I don't know Justin Bieber. Um, right now I hate Orson Scott Card because I found out what a horrible, hateful piece of shit he is. So, but I don't want to kill him. Someone said Beyonce. Oh, I like Beyonce. She's pretty. She has a nice voice. I don't know. I don't, I've never really thought about that, I guess. If it was going to be an actor who's acting in my movie and they die, I'd want it to be somebody really good. Not, you know, not someone be, that I dislike, I guess. Horror Screams, who says, who wants to know Beaver? Yeah, apparently he's kind of a douche. I don't know much about the kid, but he's done some douchey stuff. All right, I think I'm almost out of time, right, Robert? So someone got a really good final question for me. Somebody just apologized for Beaver on behalf of Canada. <laughs> Thank you. You've given us so many other great things, though. There are a lot of talented Canucks. So I think we can let that one slide. You gave us Gretzky. So I'm asked, where can they support me at? Um, I mean, really the best thing to do, because I don't have any campaigns or anything going on right now, but um, the uh, uh, link I sent before, the Store Envy, uh, maybe I can send it again. Yeah. Story Envy, if you want to pick up DVDs, um, if you buy them directly from me, the money goes right into Dustin Mills Productions, and I can make more movies and afford my ramen noodles. So if you want to support me, the best thing you can do is buy, buy stuff from me. So um, Robert says he'll add it to the Facebook page. Thank you so much, Robert. So, um, yeah. Um, so he said, love the films. I hope there will be a Pup Monster Massacre 2. Keep on keeping on. I'm definitely going to keep on keeping on. We'll see about Pup Monster Massacre 2. It kind of depends on the fans. And Max says, I'm waiting for Skinless Pete. I know. I'm working on it. October. Hopefully. Hehehe. <laughs> Max is offering you to do a cameo. You all saw it for free. Might hold you to that, Max. Max, we should make our monsters fight each other. I'd watch that. Uh, Horace Screams is thanking me for being here. Thank you for 
for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, it. It makes me feel like somebody cares about my crazy ass movies, and that makes me feel good um, because I love telling stories. I love for people to hear my stories. So um, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Oh, well, Indie Horror is thanking me once again. Uh, thank you, man. You've helped me get the word out on the movies, and um, I'll do whatever I can. i got to figure out this Days of the Dead predicament, but I'll talk to Jason and talk to you, and we'll get it figured out. Um, but, yeah. All right, well, thanks, guys. I hope you're all hanging in there to watch the rest of the movies tonight. Um, hope you dig them. Email me. Find me on Facebook, whatever. Um, and uh, be my friend, talk to me, buy my stuff. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Enjoy the movies. <laughs>